With the Colgate Cave Clean Sports Newsreel. Bill Stern, the Colgate Safety Man, is on the air. Bill Stern, the Colgate Safety Man, is for his man. Take his advice and you will see you'll get a taste of smooth and clean. You'll be a Colgate Bright Left Fan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bill Stern bringing you the 354th edition of the Colgate Cave Clean Sports Newsreel. Featuring strange and fantastic stories. Some legends, others mere hearsay, but also interesting. We'd like to pass them along to you. Our guest tonight in person is the lovely movie star, Miss Vivian Blaine. But before we bring you Vivian Blaine, let's begin with... Real One, Profile of Age. Last week on this program, we told a story that's drawn many inquiries, and they all wanted to know, was the story true? Ladies and gentlemen, it was true. So that was the story of Frank White. When Frank White was 60 years old, he won the golf championship of the state of Utah. That was 10 years ago. The years passed by after that, and he was forgotten. Until recently, Frank White came back to the sport headlines, when once again he became a state champion. For two weeks ago... Frank White won the championship of the state of Utah in tennis. And that's the story of a man who won the golf championship of the state of Utah at the age of 60 and the tennis championship of the state of Utah at the age of 70. But ladies and gentlemen, if you find that hard to believe, let me tell you a far stranger story of age. The story of a baseball team in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's a famous baseball team. For last winter, it played before over 100,000 people. In fact, this baseball team became so famous last winter that the Saturday Evening Post wrote a feature story about it. And it really is amazing because, you see, every man who plays on this baseball team has to be over 75 years old. But even that story of age can be touched. Did you see a story in the papers recently about a famous Russian doctor named Dr. Eli Bogomolik? He's the man who invented blood plasma, and for that he became famous. But there's another experiment of his going on right now that may make his name more famous. For Dr. Bogomolik has established a hidden city, a hidden city in the barren wastes of Siberia, a city that's entirely composed of men, a city that's been in existence for 12 years, a city in which not a single soul has died in the 12 years that it has been in existence, a city where each man has set a secret serum to keep him alive, and it works, for these men are not only alive, but they engage in daily wrestling matches with each other despite the fact... Despite the fact that every man who lives in that city is over 100 years old. But speaking of age, the strangest story of age is the story of a mountain climber. In the state of Pennsylvania, one of the most difficult mountains to climb is Mount Higgins. Mount Higgins isn't Pennsylvania's highest mountain, but it is one of the steepest and most treacherous mountains in that state. And although many men have tried to climb Mount Higgins, very few have ever done it. However, last year... A new record was established when a mountain climber named Bud Swam, despite his age, did climb Mount Higgins. Bud Swam wasn't an ordinary mountain climber, and yet despite his age, he worked his way up at steep sides with amazing speed. And when he did reach the top of Mount Higgins, Bud Swam was exhausted, but he had set a new record. He had broken the old record that had stood for over 100 years. But maybe you'd be interested in knowing why Bud Swam, at his age, climbed Mount Higgins as fast as he could. You see, Bud Swam knew. He knew that the Pennsylvania police were looking for him. An alarm had been sounded and the police were after him. The Pennsylvania police finally did catch Bud. But they had to go all the way up to the top of Mount Higgins to get him. And now maybe you'd like to know why the Pennsylvania police were looking for Bud. It wasn't because he just set a new mountain climbing record. No, the Pennsylvania police were after Bud Swam despite his age because he had run away from his home. For you see, Buddy Swam, Buddy Swam, who last year set a new record in mountain climbing, was a baby. A baby who was only two and a half years old. But of a story from the official Pennsylvania Police Court record. Real two. The greatest right-handed pitcher of all time is the loving title bestowed by his admiring fans on Robert Feller of the Cleveland Indians. And Bob Feller bestows on Colgate Brush with Shea Cream another loving title, for he recently wrote me. It's a treat, Bill, to work with his light, fluffy brushless cream. It makes my tough whiskers so soft they shave off slick as fuzz. I just spread on Colgate Brushless straight from the jar, go once over lightly with my razor, and the old face is smooth as a button. Colgate Brushless Shave Cream is really a winner. Regards, Bob Feller. Yeah, Colgate Brushless, the Shave Cream of Champions, is a light, fluffy cream. It's not heavy or greasy. And being light, it's easy and speedy to spread. And because it's light and fluffy, not heavy or greasy, 
Let your whiskers stand up to your razor glide through, not over them. And it keeps moist. It stays on the job. It works with your razor all the way. Result? A close, clean, smooth shave and double quick time. No sting or smart from Colgate Brushless. Colgate Brushless Shave Cream is made especially for you fellows with tough whiskers and tender skin. And because it's not gummy or greasy, it rinses off your razor and your face fast. Use Colgate Brushless Shave Cream for your next shave. If it doesn't make good on every count, just send the top of the carton to me. Bill Stern, Terra Colgate, Jersey City, Zone 2, New Jersey. And I'll see that you get double your money back. Ask for the jar of Colgate Brushless, the shave cream of champions tonight. It's light and it's right. Real free. Portrait of Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is one of the most famous buildings in the world. It's the best-known sporting arena that's ever been built. Each week, Madison Square Garden holds the most famous fights in this country. Yeah, it's easy to talk about Madison Square Garden. But what if Madison Square Garden could talk about itself? What a story it could tell. Fantastic, incredible, perhaps. But come with me into the land of fantasy, into the land where buildings can talk. My name is Madison Square Garden. I'm over a hundred years old. I've been rebuilt twice. I don't even stand on Madison Square anymore, but they still call me Madison Square Garden. I'll never forget when I was first built. I was built by a man named George Francis Crane. George Francis Crane was a multimillionaire, but shortly after he built me, he disappeared. Years later, I noticed an old man coming each day to sit on a park bench outside my door. He'd just sit there and stare at me. He came every day for 22 years, and yet during those 22 years, he never once came inside of me. He never came inside of me until the day he died. After he was dead, I found out why he sat on that park bench and just stared at me. He hated me. I'd cost him $40 million. Because this man who sat on a park bench and stared at me every day for 22 years without once coming inside of me was the man who had built me, George Francis Crane. But I can tell you even stranger stories about myself. Stories of when they first called me Madison Square Garden. But then, one night among the thousands of people within my walls was a man named Stanford White. I knew Stanford White very well. Suddenly, some shots rang out. And in a room high up inside of me, Stanford White fell dead. They'd been murdered. Strange, isn't it, that they should murder Stanford White within my walls? Because he was the man who had drawn up my plans and designed me. After that, whenever they mentioned my name, Madison Square Garden, they said I was bad luck, but that wasn't true. I brought good luck to people. Why, I remember a bricklayer who helped build me. Today, this former bricklayer is one of America's most famous writers. You know him as John Steinbeck. And I remember a little newsboy who used to sell newspapers outside my door. Today, he just about runs me. His name is Mike Jacobs. But wait a minute. The strangest story of all that concerns me took place before I was even born. Many years ago, according to legend, a famous fist fight took place in New York City. This fist fight was famous because a certain man stepped in and stopped that fight. This man who stopped that fight was the famous politician James Madison. And because James Madison did stop that fist fight, the spot upon which that fist fight had taken place was called Madison Park. And when years later they built me on Madison Park, they called me Madison Square Garden. Strange, isn't it, that I will become famous as the home of fist fights should have gotten my name from a fist fight stopped by James Madison. But maybe you'd like to know the names of the two men who reputedly engaged in that fist fight that James Madison stopped. One of these men in that fist fight was America's notorious traitor, Benedict Arnold. And his opponent? His opponent was the first president of the United States, George Washington. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. It got its name thanks to a fist fight between America's worst citizen and America's first citizen. 
Real four. Just a moment, we'll present the lovely movie star, Miss Vivian Blaine. But first, here is Charles F. McCarthy. Colgate Brushless Shave Cream makes light work of shaving. For this famous shave cream of champions is light and fluffy, not heavy or greasy. Being light and fluffy, Colgate Brushless spreads easily and keeps your whiskers upright for your razor to cut through. And Colgate Brushless keeps moist through your shave for a no-snag, no-pull performance. Then, too, because it's light and fluffy, not heavy or greasy, Colgate Brushless rinses off in a flash. Shave with Colgate Brushless Shave Cream. It's light and it's right. And now back to Bill Sturt. Bill Five, Colgate camera close up of Vivian Blaine. Here is one of Hollywood's loveliest movie stars. Miss Vivian Blaine will soon be seen starring in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor musical Three Little Girls in Blue. But you've all seen Vivian Blaine on the screen. Now here she is in person. A great star, Vivian Blaine. Who will promptly knock herself out after that introduction. Well, it's true, Vivian. Hey, didn't you just finish a musical picture with Terry Cuomo entitled If I'm Lucky? I did. And in making it, I learned a great deal about sports. Oh, what do you mean, Vivian? I mean, I learned that Terry Cuomo is quite an athlete. Mm -hmm. What other Hollywood stars are athletic? Well, a pretty fair star once fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. Who would that be? Victor McLaglin. Mm, I didn't know that. But speaking of boxing, Bill, did you know that Jimmy Cagney was also a professional prize fighter? And so was George Ross. Well, I knew about George, and I also knew that Bob Hope tried fighting for a while. That's right. But tell me, Bill, what Hollywood stars would you say were the best swimmers? Oh, Johnny Wisemuller, Esther Williams, I guess. Mm-hmm. I thought that too, you'd say. Didn't you know that Alan Ladd was an Olympic diving champion? You're right, sir. Go on, Vivian. Who else? Well, Pat O'Brien, Sonny Tufts, and Johnny Mac Brown were all football stars. Hey, look, that's enough about the men now. How's about the gal? <laughs> okay, here's one for you. Betty Grable used to be the bat boy of the St. Louis Cardinals. Some bat boy. <laughs> You're so right. And Catherine Hepburn once won a speed skating contest. Now, next, I suppose you'll be telling me that Sonia Henney was a great tennis star. Well, she was. She came second in the Norwegian Championship. Mm, how's about a gal named Vivian Blaine? What does she play? Well, Vivian Blaine is playing the Roxy Theater in New York right now. Sounds to me like a plug. Speaking of plugs, let's not forget Crosby's horses. <laughs> but seriously, Bill, and I'd like to be serious for a minute. I never met anything so much in my life as what I'm about to say. We can't all be good in sports, but we can all be good sports. Good night, Bill. Thanks so much. Good luck and good night, Vivian Blaine. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the three-o mark for tonight. Next Friday night, we'll be back same time, same stations, with another edition of the Colgate Shave Cream Sports Newsreel. Our guest next Friday evening will be the famous orchestra leader, Cab Calloway. So be sure and be with us next Friday night at the same time over the same stations when we greet you with our special guest, the King of Heidi Ho, the famous band leader, Cab Calloway. See you then. And until then, I'll be seeing you on the screen in the News of the Day newsreel at your favorite Lowe's or Associated Theaters. Now, until next Friday night at this very same time, this is Bill Stern for Colgate Shave Cream wishing you all a good, good night. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man is on his way. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man has lots to say. He told you ten for two rows, the inside dope, you really know. So listen in next Friday night. She's all kinds of ATP. Ladies and gentlemen, the discovery of atomic energy with its vast destructive power imposes on every intelligent person a great obligation. That obligation is to be informed. Start by reading the proposals made by your government to the United Nations Atomic Energy Commission. Ms. Vivian Blaine appeared on this program courtesy of 20th Century Fox. The Bill Stern Show tonight came from New York City. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>